Hey guys, SK here, back with another Clash Royale video, hope you guys are all doing well. In today's video, we're going to be watching Titan, one of the best 3 Pro Expo Cycle players in history, and we're going to be looking at his games that got him to 3,300 rating points, number 11 in the entire world, with 3 Pro Expo Cycle alone. That's right, no champions, no evolutions even in this broken Evo RG, Evo Firecracker meta, just pure, plain old 3 Pro Expo Cycle. Titan's one of the best players of all time, I would say, with this deck, and we have countless great games against top players, even against evolution cards like evo firecracker even against hog eq mighty minor evo fc so we have some great games to show you guys today i'm going to be going over the games and giving my analysis on what he was doing his thought process etc so if you guys do enjoy the video please make sure to like and subscribe make sure to follow titan as well and let's get right into the matches Alright guys, so I'm really excited to show these games today. We have the first one against African Cycle here, very interesting name, and he's playing Hog EQ, Mighty Minor Firecracker, the most broken deck in the game right now, right next to Royal Giant, like any Royal Giant version, honestly, like, both Hog EQ, uh, Firecracker, and RG are the most broken decks in the meta by far this season, and so both of those, in my opinion, would counter Expo, like, just on paper, you know, Hog EQ, and then just RG... But it's evolved, and Expo doesn't have any evolutions here. Obviously, Titan, he's that kind of guy. He doesn't play with this new stuff. He's just playing through Prono with Ice Spirit. Like, he literally just doesn't care. And I want to see exactly how he's dealing with this meta. Look at this, by the way. Really perfect uh, Fireball reacting instantly to the Firecracker. Because if he didn't get prepared for that play, he would not have actually been able to hit that Fireball. He kind of knew it was coming. And I did watch some of these games before actually recording, because... I just wanted to see how he actually beat these, but now I'm going to be trying to explain them and analyze for you guys, so you can maybe get some tips and advice on how to succeed with Expo in this godforsaken meta. So, really nice anti-EQ Tesla there, and as you guys can see, Titan does go for the defensive log. Very important to defend against a Mighty Miner on your Knight with either a Nice Spirit or a Log, so you can reset the charge up. And Titan's actually in the lead, and I think another thing you guys will see here is he's very particular about his Expos. So... I'm just trying to see, honestly, myself as well, how to play this matchup, because I've been kind of tilted recently, and I've also not really had much time. If you guys have been watching my videos, I've been pretty busy with my internship at the bank, and just very busy overall, not much time to grind, and so, like, I'm not playing my best, and X was really not that good in this meta, so it's been kind of a struggle. I do really want to see how Titan is doing, um... And learn from him and, of course, impart that knowledge onto you guys as well. Because I know not everyone would get to see this kind of gameplay. That's another thing I love about these kinds of videos where I can just showcase, you know, the best of the best gameplay and let you guys watch and uh, learn. Because you might not be able to get a friend link like this yourself or these replays. So hopefully you guys appreciate that as well. Um, defensive log, just to make sure you notice, Titan is not taking any hog hits. He could have also, like, rapid cycled to another Tesla, but he wanted to save his cycle and kind of just not, uh screw it up too bad. I think he's going to activate King off this Firecracker here, and he does. So nice activation, perfect timing as always. Nice Ice Spirit and Center Archers. What you guys need to notice right now is still zero Expos played out of Titan. It's already double Elixir, so he's not getting impatient. He knows exactly how to play the matchup, and she just goes for an anti-EQ Tesla right there, which forces out a high Earthquake by African Cycle. So you'll feel stupid to say that name, but Ice Spirit comes down, Archers log, and that should fully clean this up. Uh, Evil Firecracker is down. Look at that, guys. Lighting up the entire arena. Although Titan does clip it with the log. And Knight opposite lane. Which will get some chip on the right. But honestly, like, that's still fine. I mean, he could have gone that, like, super high up, I guess. But that was still perfectly fine. Uh, just Fireball Cycles again. Notice Titan is actually in the lead right now. And he's just Fireball Cycling. Like, that's all he's really doing. Um, and defending these hogs. Controlling the Firecrackers very well. That's what I really want to take note of. He's going to wait for this Firecracker to go one more. And then Fireball. Notice that, guys. That's how you have to counter this Firecracker cracker because the knockback is very annoying but what you can do is if you can just predict the trajectory you know it pushes itself back you can try and get fireball value on the firecracker plus tower as much as possible and so titan's actually going same lane as uh his opponent right now because he's just trying to get the fireball cycle value and he actually does predict that bomb tower with the skeletons react instantly with the knight and just straight up fireballs again because he just got a pretty positive trade i guess tesla's gonna clean up Tesla's still alive being annoying, and notice, like, these pre-Teslas are actually really annoying for his opponent, because what can he really do about them, except for high EQ, which he did last time, and then Titan literally just straight up fireballed tower as a result. And now he goes for the expo in the right, and this is a really nice expo, and this is something you guys have to take note of in this matchup. You never go in same lane as them, for the most part. Also, really nice, actually, inwards expo, I didn't really recognize right away, the bomb tower is actually not even targeting, and notice, Titan did not even intend on getting a lock with that expo, like, he was defending it, but he was just going for that to bait stuff out and then go for a fireball on tower at the end like just get a positive trade and that's actually how you have to use your expo sometimes because the sad truth is expo is a win con but 
in a matchup like this, in a meta like this, it's just not really that strong. Really nice archer to snipe that evil firecracker. Skeleton just to make sure, and then I think he might try and get a fireball. No, he doesn't. He just logs, actually, on this firecracker. Again, high Tesla always coming down, and he's up by 800 right now. And he actually only went for one offensive expo the whole game, I believe, which was to punish a super aggressive push on the left, so... This has all been with fireballs. Like, it's just actually incredible how he's playing this. And he pretty much has it in the bag. Like, it's over. And this guy's one of the better Hoggy Q players because he was, like, top 10, top 20 in the world, I believe, at one point. And, I mean, I think he generally plays 2.6 or Hoggy Q, so he is a Hog main. It's not like Titan just playing someone who's boosted by this deck. There are a lot in this meta, honestly, but he's actually just playing. And I really like what he's done here. I haven't done that much myself. The low archers against the... Uh, hogs because I was usually just splitting my archers but he's actually saving them for a really nice defense and that's going to be good game like just a straight up very clean win almost I don't think he took a single hog hit actually and almost no firecracker hit damage on tower just clean fireballs perfect game against hog EQ mighty minor firecracker Alright, so we have the next one against Hadi, who's playing Giant Double Prince, and as you guys can see, he's one of the best Giant players in the world, number 9, best ladder finish, number 131, best global tourney finish, and I want to show this one before the others, because I feel like this is a really tough matchup for 3 Prince Expo Cycle, especially with the arrows in there. I don't think there's much of a difference between Fireball Zap and Arrow Zap, because arrows are just really good against the Archers, so Titan at the top, Hadi on the bottom. Don't worry, guys, there are still going to be many more Evolution games in store here, such as the Splash Yard Evo Barbs one, or another uh, Minor Wall Breaker. Evil Firecracker one. Just wanted to show this one because this is, again, in my opinion, a really tough matchup for Through Prono. And Titan does just find ways to win against a lot of these matchups. Like, he has just pretty much every matchup in the game figured out. And he does sometimes lose hard counters, all of us do, but he actually wins them more often than most people, I can say. Like, he beats Giant Double Prince a lot. Same could be said about 7 4 back in the day, if you guys remember. 7 4 and the best expo players. My favorite of all time, probably. He would always beat Giant Double Prince too. He would beat Kamikaze and that. So, anyway, this is some new meta. Um, through Pano versus Giant Double Prince and we do see the expo come down so really nice archers too because he knows Hadi does not have the arrows in cycle so archers do have free reign to take out the giant and that's a really key detail because if he went Tesla that would have been a minus one as opposed to the archers plus he is just able to kind of let it go um, and save the Tesla for later. Also, Knight does get one sneaky hit on the left, so that's pretty helpful. Hadi is kind of cycling a bit, and Titan is definitely going to go for an expo with this Knight here, because he is definitely trying to outcycle the Giant, I would say, in a uh, single. So there's the expo right there, and Giant is officially outcycled. Now Titan has to go for the Archers to tank for this Prince, and I think he can. Hadi just barely going to get the arrows in time but okay that's actually so unfortunate because prince does get a charge on the expo and just because of that titan lost his entire initiative i do think there could have been something a bit better there not to criticize titan because obviously we're here to learn but i think if he maybe went with an archer to sack one hit against the prince charge and then went skeletons that would have been a huge expo lock granted i think he was expecting to get his skeletons back like elixir wise in time to tank for the prince charge so that was just a really unlucky sequence so unfortunately his lead does go away like with momentum but you guys can see the main goal he was going for there out cycle the giant and he's still going for it expo opposite also notice how he's going opposite lane because he wants to force stuff out opposite and again arrows are out of cycle so titan knows cycle very well he knows elixir he knows he can just get away with this like normally you would have to go for a tesla to take care of the giant but if you do go archers and they don't have arrows you can get away with that too so looks like titan is just going for archers at the right time actually as i said i was trying to see how he gets around the arrows because as i said like they are kind of annoying um, even instead of the fireball, because even though fireball is a big spell, arrows you can kind of out damage if you spell cycle better. Uh, they still do a really good job against archers, and so split archers right now prevent really much arrows value from coming down. I think he might protect the Tesla with a knight, and he does. And then Tesla center in the center is just going to do well. Also, it's I think it's four tiles down, not three. Um, Expo comes down as well, and the four tile down thing is because it does not die. I believe, yeah, it should be four. It's because it doesn't get hit by a, or rather, uh, Hadi does not have a fireball to use against the Tesla. That's normally a placement that's susceptible to getting fireballed plus the tower, but Titan knows that there's no fireball in this deck, so just minor, minor improvements. Does go for the archers plus ice spirit, and this actually might be a lock if Hadi isn't prepared. Prince jumps, and that's going to be a lock. We will see a knight as well instantly, and then probably skeletons to predict. Yup, Titan's right on top of it. Predicts the e -whiz, and that's going to be a huge lock, and that's probably going to be game if Titan can maintain this lead now, and that's what he was going for the whole time. Like, he's going for locks, but 
he eventually got the giant upcycle to the point where he was able to go same lane and he's actually still just going he's going for an expo opposite because that giant i believe was actually not an expo range uh it might not have been so knight for the dark prince and then he is gonna have to let this expo go and just defend the giant really far tesla does kite all the way over there skeleton should come down for the miner and they are gonna get zapped off i think but uh, at least uh titan is kind of up a bit he does go for an expo in the left. Now, Hadi unfortunately cycled back, because if you, the giant player knows what they're doing, they can easily cycle back to another giant with their spells. Arrow Zap are three and two elixir, respectively. So it's not like you can easily upcycle as the expo player if the giant player knows how to use their spells. But um, Titan is still maintaining a lead of some sort right now, and Fireball Log on the defense there, really key, actually. And notice, he's not getting too aggressive, he's not getting greedy with offensive expos or just spelling on tower, he's just taking a lot of value when he sees it. Now, Log, Fireball, and Dark Prince, very nice play, because as you guys can see, Log does clip the Dark Prince shield, takes it out, so then the Fireball is able to get value. Archers come down, he's gonna have to catch this miner with a knight, and he does not, so that's gonna be some minor chip. Does have to log to mitigate as much as possible, and archers last second for that phoenix. We're gonna have to see two more fireballs come down. There's the first one. We're gonna, also gonna have to see Titan catch this knight. He has no choice. Or catch this miner, rather. And I think he did. Yeah, he did. So that's gonna be it. Log on defense, fireball, and fireball does more than arrows, so perfectly calculated, as you guys can see. Titan was able to win against a super hard matchup, joint double prince with the miner. Very, very impressive. Pretty much no real misplays on either and I would say like just Titan played very well although that single was a bit unlucky but that was a wonderful wonderful match Alright guys, so now we have this game against Riku, or I'm not sure what his name exactly, but he's a pro. He has a number 8 best GT and ladder finish with both badges pretty much being maxed. Um, he's playing minor wall breakers with the evolved firecracker. Titan's unfortunately at the top again. I don't always enjoy watching from the top because I'd much rather watch from the perspective of the player we're trying to learn from, but I still think it's fine because we can still kind of put ourselves into his perspective and see what's going on. So we are going to see um, the goblin fire come down and maybe Titan does not like the matchup but split skeletons, split archers, and that log is actually going to force out a log of titan. So nice reaction time there, yeah, because that subtle thing, I don't think the archer would have shot the wallbreaker in time. That would have been a huge wallbreaker connection right away. So Expo comes down to punish this bomb tower. I don't know if that's an anti-fireball to the left or not, but basically, um, annoying bomb tower. And titan does elect to punish with the Expo now. I don't know how he's going to deal with these bats, with because Ice Spirit... Okay, never mind, he just literally just straight up hits every single bat with the ice spirit i was gonna say like that's another thing i dislike about this uh matchup minor wall breakers at, at least when you're playing ice spirit against any deck with bats mostly minor wall breakers it's kind of a pain because the bats get so much value and it's hard to clip all of them but i guess titan found the answer right just hit all five with your ice spirit um but honestly it's it is kind of annoying we're gonna see a really nice tesla placement here take note of this guys because he knew a firecracker was coming down so he was able to activate king and that's just a really clean play if you ever have like a matchup against uh wall breakers firecracker or hog firecracker you need to tesla you can take note of that placement where you can tesla in an activatable i don't even know if that's a word but a, a basically a position that allows you to activate off the firecracker it's very optimal saves elixir and gets the job done so perfect defense the wall breakers plus nice king activation which is going to be huge obviously against minor wall breakers like this is a really annoying matchup i would say and uh any king tower activation is going to be a huge help so Nice defense there, Farcracker, that the bridge comes down, Log takes it out, and then Archer, so this is a bit annoying, because this is well, how I want to see Titan deal with, like, how does he deal with the Firecrackers, because Firecracker gets a lot of value against Expo, Wallbreakers come down, nice prediction Knight on Titans, and as you guys can see, he had, I think he knew his exact cycle, and again, Ice Spirit, oh, only clips 4 out of 5, that's still really good though, like, it's hard to hit everything with the Ice Spirit all the time, uh, but yeah, Titan knew that uh, the Wallbreakers were coming down to Kite, because he knew his hand, so he just wanted to go for the Knight to predict and then not take any wallbreaker damage he does eat the entire miner in the other lane late ice spirit comes down but split archers first tesla and still no real expos yet we might see one soon because titan is up quite a bit but you guys can see he's very patient we are going to see a fireball for those bats and that's a play that is actually pretty underrated because as i said it's very tough to deal with the bats with an ice spirit and it's actually really valuable to be able to just fireball them in the lane you're going for because that takes all of them out okay if evil firecracker comes down there's going to be a lot of damage as you guys can see evil firecracker is insane and it's just causing a lot of issues that's what like four or five hundred damage right there i think just from the residual damage so second log does thankfully come down but damage is done that was kind of devastating lots of firecracker chip on the right side tower for titan 
I guess, is this the left in Titan's perspective? It might be, but right in this case anyway, based on our perspective. Tesla comes down, and are we going to see an expo with this? Because this is a huge counter push. Do you see the bomb tower? I think Titan might just play it safe and not even offensive expo because he's just that patient. Yeah, actually, look at that, guys. He had a huge counter push. He had the knight. He had the archers. He does get one knight hit and one archer hit, though, for it. And he didn't even go for the expo. He knew he wasn't really up enough. He didn't have the right cycle, whatever the reason was. He's patient, and so you guys have to take note of that. Nice fireball clipping the mighty plus some bait as well. Miner comes down to clear up the defensive expo. So many bats everywhere. And log as well. Also notice, guys, uh, his opponent does not have a big spell, so Titan is taking full advantage of that because they're... Oh, that's a really unfortunate uh, Archer's interaction, though, but Knight is going to come down for this Miner still. We're going to have to see a log, too, and we do, and still... Wow, that was a perfect defense. All those Firecrackers painful, but Tesla comes down just in time, and so Titan's playing so patiently. Still no offensive expos. I believe all his damage is with Fireballs, if I'm not mistaken, so just a very unique and smart playstyle, and just straight-up Fireballs tower here, so... Now we have to see how Titan's going to deal with the Mighty Miner 3 card cycle spam because evil firecracker is back and he's definitely gonna get back to at least one more as well knight ice spirit the bridge and just fireballs straight up fireballs tesla comes down for the mighty wall breakers stacked archers again like i was saying he noticed that his opponent doesn't have a big spell so he can just afford to stack archers very nice play he's getting so much value out of his archers actually like that's something that i think seven four told me the best expo players do like just look at how much value they get from their archers and titan gets a lot of damage received from that evil firecracker splash but still a lot being dealt with these fireballs raining down on the tower of uh riku's i think his name is riku or i'm not sure if you guys speak japanese you can let me know but uh, i really don't know but he activation is also paying dividends you guys can see because just defending very well might see a fireball on defense here to make sure that firecracker doesn't get any value or just knight up high as you guys can see he's kind of stopping the splash from hitting tower and once again fireball raining down pretty much perfectly played by titan even the opponent gives a good game because he he can't really say anything else like titan just played that beautifully played very well spell cycle essentially and that's going to be another win against another evolution firecracker deck Alright, so now we have this game against Betfist, which is the final game that got Titan to 3.3k. As you guys can see, Betfist, you probably know who he is. He has a number one ladder finish. He's kind of known for being a 3.0 cycle player, but he is pretty versatile. Has played lots of different decks in the past, and as you can see right now, he's not playing Expo. He's playing the Remy Ellie Magic Archer Minor Wallbreakers deck with an Inferno Tower instead of Bomb Tower, so... In my opinion, this is still not really a great matchup. With the Bomb Tower, this is definitely a bad matchup for Expo after all the balances and the current meta, because actually pre-log as well by Titan, I think that might have been predicting a Marcher, because that was not at 8 Elixir. Knight should come down for these, and now we'll see a Marcher on the Knight, and then a uh, Fireball right away. So, as you guys can see, you want to Fireball the Marcher ASAP. There are some things you can do, like for example against P.E.K.K.A. if they go for an aggressive Marcher like that. I just go for the R- Oh wow, look at the clean skeletons as well. Like, Titan just knows the exact cycle the exact plays people are going to make it's actually incredible he did that against uh riku in the other game as well very impressive so um yeah really nice betters doesn't even know what to do right now they're both leaking titan switch the archers so yeah i would say this is not the best matchup though because uh ever since a lot of the balance changes expo has just been really weak and even tesla doesn't do as well as before and uh, they can just stall out forever they can defend i saw a clip that was pretty frustrating to watch actually about like someone defending against through pano for like or it was pompo for like a minute straight and he was down like four pumps and he still defended with this deck because it's such an easy thing to do and actually it might be a lock that's actually a lock so nice i was talking about the matchup but titan somehow gets the lock so that's gonna be really nice that's gonna put him in the lead and he actually might just be able to win right here with another expo if he goes for it at six because uh Betfus is pretty low and looks like titan's actually gonna wait elixir wise to go for the expo maybe wait till 10 so you can go for a knight in front one play you like to do sometimes with expo is go for an expo at eight so you can go for a knight right away he goes for the oh, okay that's pretty I guess Titan was letting it go. Bethfist does have to go for 8 Elixir, 5 with the Eye Tower, 3 with the Knight, so that's a uh, 6 for 8, and then Titan goes for Archers, so uh, 8 for 9, minus 1 for Titan, but he's still up Elixir because he was up overall, and I think that was an okay trade. If he predicted that, he might have been able to win, but I mean, it's pretty annoying to break through a Knight Eye Tower or Knight Bomb Tower, so who really knows. We are going to see a Fireball on the Marcher. Nice play out of Betfist to go Marcher opposite lane to force the Fireball in the other lane, but as you guys can see, the correct play in this matchup is still to Fireball almost every single Marcher, because you don't want it to get any value if possible. It's just a free 4 for 4. You get tower damage, you just get it off the board, and just log cycling as well is Titan. 
Uh, Tesla comes down. I think that's in fireball range. I think, or is it? Okay, it is actually nice fireball by Titan there. It looks like it might have been a bit sneaky, but it was in range. And then Log comes down as well. So that's going to be a nice defense again out of Titan. He's actually up like 700 because of that single elixir sequence. And uh, he's probably in the lead with momentum for the rest of the game. And as I was saying, I don't think this is a good matchup with Bomb Tower. I think it's at least like 60-40 for Minor Wall Breakers. Even Riley was saying, uh, like we were talking about the matchup before, like it's definitely Remy Ellie deck matchup. But I think with Inferno Tower, it becomes a little bit more forgiving because I Towers, one more Elixir just costs more, and it gets less value. Like, you don't really go for pre I Towers like you would for a pre Bomb Tower in this matchup, which is something I hate the most when I'm playing. Anyway, Defense Vexbo comes down. That's a nice play because uh, they don't have a big spell in this deck, of course, and Titan can now go for a counter push with the expo maybe even tesla we'll see or just goes for the archers instead actually predicting the eye tower and then this is going to be a nice little push but marcher can get infinite value if betfos plays it correctly and it is getting a lot of value so far we're going to see the log on the wall breakers and just a nice little connection uh should be on the left nope spears come down but that should still be a connection yep minor connection like three expo ticks and titan can go for an expo right away at six i think he actually is still being patient though i think he wants to protect against the eye tower no he's actually he's uh proving me wrong he's going for a defense expo even though he's up elixir he's not pressing advantage he knows it's not the correct play in this matchup so i guess you guys should take note of that like this kind of matchup pretty frustrating to go against at least in my experience but titan looks like he's figured out just play passively and go defensive expos i used to do that a lot back in the day when expo had more lifetime I didn't think it was that worth it anymore, but it seems like it is still really worthwhile, so I'll probably have to try that in my own game sometime. Fireball comes down on the night. Really nice. You guys will notice Titan's probably going to try and get a lot of fireballs on tower if possible right now, because he wants to get the damage. And even though he doesn't get an expo lock, he still got the fireball damage, and thankfully that one marcher, or that one wallbreaker doesn't connect. Ice Spirit Tesla comes down to predict a marcher at the bridge, so Titan had to do that play. If he didn't go for that, marcher might have gotten infinite value again. Ice Spirit plus archers plus knight, only one minor hit will come down. Titan is willing to overcommit against those miners just to not take any hits. Pre-log on those spears. NATO's coming down, and Titan just fireball cycles now because it's becoming a spell cycle match. Knight comes down, and Titan again. He knew that was going to be in the front because of the pre-log, I guess, but he has to watch out for this marcher, and he does get ready with the archers plus log. So one marcher hit comes down. Fireball's going to have to come down. Play's going to have to tank for this miner. Ice Spirit plus Skeletons, and Betfist is not back to his NATO, so that's actually going to be game. Oh my god. Marcher comes down, and that was a very intense, as you guys can see. Pretty even matchup. Uh, still not really that good for 3 pointer like it used to be. Not really a counter, but Titan played so well, and won's, won by 42 HP. That's just really commendable. Alright guys, into the next match now against Seok GA, or C-O-K. I always said it was C-O-K, but in CRL I say Seok. As you guys can see, he's number 7 in the world right now. One of the best graveyard players in the entire world as well, I would say. Like, I think he's pretty known for it, and he's also a huge creator. I think he has a creator code even, because, I mean, his YouTube's in there, and he has the creator badge. Even I don't have that badge. And it looks like Seok is trying to tie. I guess I'll say Seok, even though C-O-K is how I would naturally say it. I think that's what everyone says in CRL. So, he has a good game, he wants to tie, but Titan knows this is good matchup for him and he's just not really in the mood for tying i guess so he's gonna play knight the back first play not split archers and he might just fireball this baby dragon and he does so i've if you guys have been watching my videos for a while you'll know that i've been saying fireball cycle is important against graveyard or splash yard in particular but i didn't know it was that important where he literally fireballs the baby dragon very first play of the game i guess that's what he's doing and Tesla comes down for the Baby Dragon plus Ice Wizard. This should be a pretty clean defense, I think. And uh, he's just up. Like, Tesla will take care of everything. He's not down Elixir in any sense. Goes for the Ice Spirit and then splits Archers. And Siak has a very awkward hand. Goes for the Skelly King. Titan might go for an Expo to punish that in the left. Or he might just go for a Knight to defend. I guess he's going to play passively. I want to take note of his macro decisions, guys. Because what you don't know about the best Expo players, or what you might not know, definitely what I didn't realize until very later on, is that you're not really going to improve by just spamming micro also that's a really nice lock and that's going to be a lot of damage for titan but yeah you don't really improve by just practicing micro all the time what really makes you better in my opinion as an expo player and in general in this game is your macro decisions which is like your overall game plan what kind of plays are you making offensive expo defensive expo when are you going for the expo like how are you playing the matchup what's your game plan like for example fireball cycle more in splash yard or for example, in the Remy matchup, Titan went for a lot of defensive expos to get value, even though he was up Elixir. So that's the kind of macro stuff I definitely want you guys to take note of from these games, because that's the kind of stuff that will make you better. And that's also the kind of stuff, by the way, that you can't just be explained in a video and told. Like, I can do my best to say, okay, I'm going to teach you guys exactly how to play, how Titan's playing, and 
point out his plays, but you really only get this with experience and, as 7-4 said, intuition. Like, you just have to know best yourself. That's the play in the moment. Like, no one's, when you're playing a game, right, no one's going to be telling you what to do at every moment. You're going to have to have your own decisions for yourself. So I would say that definitely take note of the macro decisions, guys, and make sure to practice because that's what's going to make you a lot better with this kind of stuff. And that's definitely what separates the best EXO players from the more mediocre ones because anyone can just learn micro, but it's all about your macro decisions because you can apply a good micro in any situation. Of course, there are people that are better at micro too, but you kind of get what I'm saying, so... Ice Spirit does clip that Skelly King and Tower. Nice little Ice Spirit chip there. And we are not going to see a Fireball here. I think I would be a bit greedy and Fireball right there on that Baby Dragon plus a Skelly King. Titan just playing very passively. And still, kind of the game is in his favor the whole time. Really nice NATO on Seox end. Usually that kind of NATO would either make or break the game. Because if you miss a NATO like that, you're kind of screwed, especially with a Graveyard. But if you hit it, you just clean up the Archers in one Baby Dragon Belt. So really nice. Split Evo Barbs come down, and Titan is probably going to take the Fireball Log in the left, if I had to guess, on the Tombstone plus Barbs, and he does. So as you guys can see, Fireball Log does kill. Actually, he doesn't even go for the Log. Uh, he saves the Log, so that's another really key thing, actually. He saved the Log for the Graveyard defense, because he's going to be able to go for Archers here, and then if uh, Seahawk does go for the Poison, no, goes for the NATO. As I was saying, guys, that's a play that doesn't really work out all the time, although that was a huge push, but it doesn't kill the archer, so if you don't get it to work, it doesn't really work out that well. And actually, Titan didn't go for a log the whole game, I guess, or the whole sequence. I guess he was considering it, like, that's why he didn't just go for an aggressive fireball log on the barbs. I think I would have personally, but that was still very clean out of Titan overall. I mean, he hasn't really taken any damage, and he's playing very well, so can't really complain about any of his plays, right? Just here to learn from them. Ice Spirit at the bridge to pressure on the left. I want to see if Titan's going to go for any defensive expos at any point, because uh, that's something you can definitely do to annoy Splash Shard players, where they get a bit more aggressive and have to play. Might definitely see a Fireball on that Tombstone. Yeah, I would definitely take that, because as I said, I figured out myself as well, like, Fireball Cycle in this matchup is imperative. Might see a Log on all of those, and we actually don't. Titan is so patient with his Logs. Knight comes down, on the skeletons in the left and uh, that's going to be a nice defense without using log on all those skeletons might see another fireball on those evil barbs in the left and we do this time they do get logged off so now we're going to have to see how titan defends because he's down quite a lot knight to block the bridge tesla as well he's winning the bridge battle fireball on the right that's a lot of value so titan's just raining fireballs down all the time and he knows exactly what he's doing new archers are back poison comes down but titan is almost back to a log i believe and he's definitely going to go for one now as i said you do want to do that. If you go for uh, archers on the graveyard and they poison, you have to log to clean it up, otherwise you're going to take a lot of damage. We're going to have to see a lot of fireballs on tower now by Titan 2. I think at least two, so... You're going to see archers and fireball ASAP, and then Titan just has to get back to a second fireball right now, so log on defense to clean up the remaining graveyard skellies, and then we should see a rapid cycle to another fireball to secure the win. Yup, knight skeletons, fireball comes down, archers to be safe as well, and that was a very clean win. Like, Titan, it got close at the end, but it wasn't really close if you think about it. Like, Titan had the game on his side pretty much the entire time. He played it very well. So that's how you beat Evo Barb Splasher against one of the best players in the world, Titan just doing his thing. Alright guys, and I have the final game for you guys against Deep Down Low. Pretty good player. Very interesting hog freeze kind of off meta deck. I've seen him up at the top, but um, obviously I would say that the other matchups were more meta based and like against more well-known players. But still, this is obviously like top ladder. Like these are the games I got. Titan 2 is 3.3k. So we're going to see how exactly this one goes down. Split Barb's first play out of Deep Down Low. Do you see the Ice Spirit coming down by Titan? And that's going to actually chip. Nope, forces out the Ice Golem. And then, I want to see how he deals with this, because, I mean, Deep Down Low does have an annoying-looking deck, but it can definitely be abused and manipulated, because he has Fireball Arrows Freeze. That is so awkward, if you think about it. The cycle, like, ha just having a Fireball and Arrows in your hand. Archers come down, we should see Arrows for them, and then Ice Spirit already comes down. Titan knew exactly what was happening, took zero damage from that, very clean, and he's actually up one as well, or... Up like half, I guess. I don't know how that even works, but he is up like half an elixir right now. Because he's at like 9 when Deep Down Low's at 8.5. But anyways, we are going to see an Expo by Titan, and then probably a Hog. Nope, Split Evo Barbs. Fair enough, because now Titan cannot get a lock. He has to worry about both lanes. So Log comes down, and Hog as well, and Titan is just going to let it go, as you guys can see. And he also goes for the Log to... or Skeletons, rather, to kite those Barbs, so... He is down a bit of elixir right now, but Titan had the perfect macro decision again. I always say this, say this at the start of the games with Expo especially, but don't per, don't think that your first Expo is going to be the game-winning Expo. There actually are situations where it is. If you get lucky, you starting hand them, or you get the perfect micro sequence, you can. But go into it with the intention to just find out more about what they have and just kind of pressure and punish. 
Titan knew exactly what he was doing. He let the expo go and he full defended against that push, and that's why he took no damage and still got a good situation. Arrows comes down for the knight by deep down low on the right, so he is kind of matching Titan in damage right now, but I think Titan's definitely got this in the bag. And again, you know, it is annoying having fireball arrows against Thruprano with archers, but I still do think that at the end of the day, this is a very uh, punishable deck. Like, this this kind of deck composition is very clunky. Like, Freeze Hog is just... I don't know. And then Tesla Ice Spirit is going to come down. And Flawless Ice Spirit by Titan. Look at that, guys. Titan always hits those Ice Spirit jumps where he just gets it to hit all five bats. I want you guys to go back in the video and see how many perfect Ice Spirits Titan's done. Because definitely been at least, like, two. And, like, that's just what he does, like, consistently. It's something that... I really would like to be able to do myself. It's just very hard, though, but Titan's Ice Spirits are always on point. Bats come down, and Titan is going to just go for the Tesla. Three tells down, so center Tesla standard. Ice Spirit at the bridge to pressure once more. And they're just going to keep fireballing these minions, I think. And then, as you guys can see, like he's not playing aggressive. He's not spamming. Knight to push that hog over, but Freeze comes down by deep down low. And very nice last second Tesla. That was actually pretty awkward because for a second it looked like Titan might not get the Tesla down. It was last in his hand. He had to cycle back to it very rapidly. But Titan is good with these on-the-spot situations and plays. And he was able to get it done. Ice Spirit comes down on everything. Arrows on the archers. And that's going to be... You know, Titan just slowly holding on to his lead like just has his opponent in a chokehold here because i mean deep download is getting pretty aggressive like going for fireballs on the tesla but uh like that's a good play to get value if it works out but i mean it just doesn't work out because titan's just defending perfectly he's taking no hog hits the whole game even deep down low gives it well played and um i would guess that's not sarcastic because i mean titan's playing pretty well he's not taking any damage and only spells pretty much and he's even finding ways to fireball cycle knight comes down might see another center tesla soon and like titan was also just going in with the attention to make games last long and go till tiebreaker you guys have to take note of that as well he's not in any rush to win the game and that's a very important thing especially with the deck like through expo cycle where it's not really strong now this should be a really good expo because titan is up like five and i'm sure he knows that as well we should see a fireball oh fireball for the ice golem wow flawless fireball and that's gonna be even deep down low surprise that's like a play that only the best expo players make because he knew he was down elixir he knows that deep down low has this you know horde barbs and everything in hand which can punish a fireball but titan still knew that was a really good situation to get and again fireball is back flawless fireball ice to hold in place like perfect micro this game's actually been incredible like i know put at the end but yeah deep down low literally gives up and that's going to be it like titan played this game pretty much perfectly oh he misplaced his expo i don't think that was bm i think that was legit an, a misplaced expo but like Titan's not the kind of guy who really BMs people, but yeah, that was a really impressive game and made his opponent give up. So that was just, you know, really good video to end or game to end the video out. And that's going to be it, guys. Number 11 in the world, as I said, with through Pernoxpa Cycle, very impressive stuff by Titan there. So again, if you guys enjoy the video, please make sure to like and subscribe and let me know if you'd like to see more of this type of video because I do love posting other people's gameplay, but I also love posting my own and trying to do well. That being said, I've been playing a lot at least as much as I can with how little time I've had. And I've not been doing the best because, honestly, I'm just not playing very well in this meta. It's a tough meta for Expo Cycle in general, like I'm sure you guys know by playing Hog EQ every game, Evo RG every game, just inherently does well against our win condition. But people like Titan still find ways to make it work, which is just very incredible, honestly. So I'll probably do more of these types of videos uh, over the weekend and upcoming end of season, unless I somehow manage to push a lot. But I'm thinking I might just play more casually and try and watch people do well instead because honestly like i don't think it's worth the grind and stress just to play for one finish when it's not even a great meta for expo and i much rather watch someone do his best work like titan right now and focus on what's important like my work and internship stuff as i said and otherwise just life balance stuff in general rather than playing like 10 hours a day and i think that's what i'm probably gonna do but we'll see how it goes anyway though as i said guys let me know if you enjoyed this type of video thank you so much for watching hope you enjoyed take care and i will see you in the next one